Dear viewers, I begin by praising Allah. All glory be to Him, our Creator, the Creator of the universe and of everything that's in it. And by seeking His blessings and mercy on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the seal of that long chain of prophets and messengers sent by Allah for the guidance of man. And uh, by greeting you all in our Islamic way, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. This episode, uh, we are going to discuss man in the glorious Quran, particularly the creation of man in the glorious Quran. And as we mentioned earlier, the area of creation with its three dimensions, the creation of the universe, the creation of life, and the creation of man, unless one believes in the Creator. If he goes to discuss any of these areas, he will enter a dark tunnel with no end. This simply because of the fact that none of us has witnessed the process of creation of the universe, the creation of life, or the creation of himself. The Quran reads, ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنتم متخذ المضلين عضدا Allah is saying in Surah Al-Kahf, I did not make them witness the creation of the heavens and the earth, nor the creation of themselves. And I was not going to take unbelievers as my attendants. On the other hand, the Quran enhances man to think about the process of creation because it is one of the greatest testimonies to the existence of the Creator, to the presence of a great Creator, to the glory of that Creator, to the exaltment of that Creator above all His creation. The Quran reads, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ Roam the earth and see how did Allah uh, start the creation. The creation in its three dimensions, the creation of the universe, creation of life, and the creation of man. If we gather these two types of statements together and the like of them are many in the Quran, we come to the conclusion that despite the fact that none of us has witnessed the creation of the universe, the creation of life or the creation of himself, yet Allah through his mercy has placed in the rocks of the earth and in outer space enough evidences that can help man in his limited knowledge to understand the process of creation. But as I said, if anybody enters into that area without admitting the fact that we are the product of a great creator, without submitting to that creator, without believing in that creator, he is entering a dark tunnel with no end. That's why in the material civilization of our time. Most of the Western scientists have gone astray, completely astray, in the area of creation, with its three dimensions. The creation of the universe, the creation of life, and the creation of man. For centuries, non-believers have always claimed that organic evolution is the answer. And they try to explain the graduality of the inhabitation of this planet with successive stages of life is enough testimony to substantiate spontaneous creation um, and negating the existence of a creator. I always tell uh, my students and my colleagues and my friends that if we mean by evolution the gradual inhabitation of this planet with successive stages of life forms, this is absolutely correct. No man worth his salt can deny this. There is a graduality in the inhabitation of uh, the planet with successive stages of life. But if we ponder about this graduality, we can see that Allah is giving us a lesson. He is showing us part of it miraculous work in the creation because every single stage 
of life played a role in changing the environments on the earth to suit the successive stage. We can easily see that the graduality of evolution or graduality of the inhabiting the earth with successive forms of life is towards uh, excellence, is directed towards excellence because this is culminated in the creation of man as evolutionists claim. And uh, natural uh, spontaneous behavior in this universe does not necessarily yeah, go to excellence. So the simple observation of the gradual inhabitation of our, our planet with su successive forms of life has been misused by material scientists to negate creation and to claim that the solar energy reacted with the mud of the earth and some water or clay and, and water to produce mud reacted on this to produce the first protein molecule which started to divide to give us the first living cell which started to divide to give us finally man. This allegation is absolute nonsense because uh, cell biologists, cell scholars today admit clearly that the composition of a living cell is so complex. It's more complex than any factory that has been established by man. By any factory thought to be established by man and has not been brought to reality yet. The living cell in the body of a human being is only 0.3 millimeter in diameter. And this living cell is so complex in composition and so perfect in functioning that it can never ever be the product of a chance or the product of an accident. Nowadays, we realize that the uh, building blocks of a living cell is the protein molecule. And the building blocks of the protein molecule are the amino acids. And it has been discussed mathematically, statistically, that an amino acid is composed of five main chemical uh, elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. And sometimes you can have phosphorus and other rare elements. Statistically speaking, to collect these five main elements, which can build an amino acid randomly from more than 105 elements known to man is absolutely impossible. You cannot possibly collect these five known elements randomly from more than 105 elements known to man. Not only this, but uh, the amino acid molecule is a three-dimensional molecule in which the other elements are arranged around the carbon atom in three dimensions. And this arrangement can be either uh, in a dextro direction or in a levo direction, clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction. In all the living beings, plants, animals, and humans, the amino acids are in the levo arrangement, in the left-hand arrangement. Once the animal dies, the living being dies, it starts to rearrange itself into the dextro arrangement, the right-handed arrangement, with fixed percentages, so much so that if we can find an amino acid left by any being that was living, and uh, we calculate the ratio of the right-handed amino acids to the left-handed amino acids, we can easily estimate the time of death of that being with uh, precision that can only have an experimental error of 1%. This phenomenon is called the racemization of amino acids. And it is really amazing, all scientists of our time, the living being is dead. Its control over its body is over. What causes these atoms to rearrange itself from the levo arrangement to the dextro arrangement? Nobody can answer this question. So not only this, but for the amino acids to join together 
to produce a protein molecule. They have also to be arranged in the left-handed direction, the levo direction. And they have to be joined together by a particular bond called the peptide bond. Who would choose all these restrictions other than the creator himself? Who would do that? Not only this, but finally we can find that uh, protein molecules on their own cannot build a living cell. A living cell has got uh, a memory called the uh, nucleus of the cell. This nucleus carries uh, the chromosomes, which carry the hereditary factors. And the, in the nucleus, we find the, these chromosomes lump into an area not more than one over 500,000 of a cubic millimeter. But once you stretch it, it comes to about two meters. In these two meters, we have 18.6 billion chemical compounds. If a single atom in any of these compounds would fail to be in its right position, this being can never exist. We will have a short break and then I will come back to you to continue with our discussion about the complexity of the build-up of the living cell. So wait for us until we meet again. Dear viewers, we were discussing the complexity of the living cell. We were saying that the most complex part of the living cell is its nucleus, which is the brain of the cell. It carries the memory of the cell. It carries the genetic code that gives that being its characters. So this genetic code is uh, accumulating on uh, itself in an area that's not more than one over 500,000 of a cubic millimeter. But once we unfold it, it's about two meters long. And in these two meters, there is 18.6 billion chemical compounds. If a single atom in any of these molecules would be displaced outside its own position. This being can never exist or it will be deformed. And that's why one can ask the question, can this come into being by an accident or a chance? The answer is definitely no. The living cell has got uh, a generator for uh, energy, has got uh, a wall that reacts with nearby cells it can exchange chemical compounds, can exchange waste and useful material. This living cell, which is the body of a human being, is in the order of 0.03 millimeter in diameter, uh, was given the capacity to produce more than 200,000 different types of proteins. And we know that a protein molecule is a very complex molecule. The Quran tells us that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created uh, Adam and Eve, may Allah be pleased with them both, from clay. The Quran reads, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alladhi ahsana kulla shayin khalaqa, wa bada khalqa al-insani min teen. It's Allah, your creator, the creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, who has perfected everything he has created and began the creation of man out of mud. We read in the Quran repeatedly creation out of dust, out of mud, out of water, out of clay, out of uh, rotten clay, out of clay uh, that is uh, uh, like a statue, solid clay. These are stages. These are phases in the process of creation. And the creator is spelling that out to us. He is the one who has perfected everything he has created and began the creation of man out of mud. So, whom can we listen to? The creator or uh, Charles Darwin or Lamarck or any of these astray, uh, materialistic individuals that have lost touch with religion and have thought, uh, lost touch with the divine guidance completely or partially. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is quoted to have said, إن الله تعالى خلق آدم من قبضة قبضها من جميع الأرض فأتى بنو آدم على قدر الأرض 
منهم الأحمر والأبيض والأسود وما بين ذلك والخبيث والطيب والسهل والحسن الله has created Adam out of a grasp of all the soil of the earth and that's why the descendants of Adam came with different colors with different qualities we have the red, the white and the black we have the easy going and the rough going we have uh, the good intended individuals and the bad intended individuals so is symbolizing to us the process of creation from the initial soil of the earth we have to accept that and see that any other argument can be a way of escape from submitting to the creator and escape goat to escape submitting yourself to your creator for centuries now people have been talking about the theory of organic evolution believing that it is the only way to explain the successive forms of life that inhabited that earth but only very recently a skeleton was discovered in Ethiopia called RD and this skeleton was said to be for a man standing on his own feet and uh, the uh, discoverer said this disproves completely the theory of organic evolution and the link between man and the ape it has nothing to do with it at all and uh, the only mistake in that discovery they said that uh, this skeleton is about uh, uh, four million and four hundred thousand years old and apparently the estimate was taken from the rock in which the skeleton was buried because the ship of uh, Noah was discovered on um, a mountain called Al-Judi as mentioned the Quran and its absolute age has been determined in the range of 30 to 38,000 years and from the sayings of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him there are only 10 generations between Adam and Noah so Adam cannot be older than 40,000 to 50,000 years of age so really we can see that some of the most recent discoveries are disproving the materialistic attitude that tried to negate creation and try to replace it by what they called the process of organic evolution and I there mention here too that uh, one of the big falls in scientific discoveries is what uh, was mentioned as uh, uh, the lost link and the lost link was uh, actually an, uh, a fake the skull of a man and the show of an ape brought together and joined together and rubbed so that they can look uh, natural and uh, buried in an area called Peltdown in England this was discovered uh, many years ago and was thought to be the uh, perfect proof to the theory of organic evolution this has remained in the British Museum of Natural History for more than 50 years until it was discovered to be a fake so science is coming back to what the glorious Quran has been preaching more than 14 centuries ago that there is no creation without a creator the creator has created everything from the very simple living cell to man everything was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything was designed to be at a time to play a particular role in conditioning and preparing the environment for the successive generation of life forms so we have to be absolutely careful from the many allegations that claim that the graduality of life on earth can be used to negate creation and can be used to assume the spontaneous creation of life through the interaction between solar rays the mud of the earth and the rest can go materially without the need of intervention of the intervention of a creator science is coming to disprove all this and to prove that man was created as man every form of life was created in its form and the Quran tells us Allah is the creator of everything that was created.
So uh, we have uh, really to uh, spread out the word that came out about the creation of man in the glorious Quran. We have to teach it to our own people and uh, invite others to read it and understand it so that we wouldn't lead people to go astray and negate religion unduly and negate the creator unduly. And the latest discovery of the RD skeleton in Ethiopia is enough evidence to support our claim that Allah created man as man. He was never an ape, he was never a monkey or a donkey or anything else. He was created as man in the form of Adam and Eve, both created from the same material. And of course, after that, Allah has made marriage and established law to enrich the earth with its inhabitants. And uh, the creation of the descendants of Adam and Eve were uh, coming through the fertilization of an ovum with a sperm, as the Quran has mentioned that clearly in many, many verses, uh, including the verse in Surah uh, Al-Najm, uh, which reads, uh, Then that uh, he, meaning Allah, the creator, uh, did create in pairs, male and female, from uh, an ovum that has been fertilized by a sperm. And here again, I have to emphasize the fact that the discovery of an ovum and a sperm uh, did not come into reality until the microscope was developed. For the Quran to spell that out more than 14 centuries ago is a living testimony that this book cannot be the work of man. It's the divine word in its divine purity. It has been preserved in the, exactly the language of revelation, the Arabic language, without the slightest infiltration of any human idea. So we have to make these facts clear to our, our own children, our own students, our own colleagues, and uh, propagate it to as many people as we can to save humanity from the slander of uh, trying to fake ideas, negating creation and negating the creator who is the sole master of that universe. And uh, until another episode, I leave you in peace with our Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all.